record on computer. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. I would like to take the moment and thank Mark Jackson, the Honorary Consul General of Japan, who is joining us today. Um, Mark Jackson is an Alabama native, and he is going to engage us today on an informative talk about uh, Japan and Alabama business connections and diplomacy. He served in many international boards, uh, including local businesses. He has run he has run a teleconferencing business, and he's also a co-founder of RJ Medical, which specializes in PPE equipment. Very important stuff right now. And he's also the chairman of the Citizens Trust Bank Alabama Advisory Board, and served on the board. Uh, for the Birmingham Sister Cities and currently serves on the Hoover Sister Cities Board. He is a Rotary Paul Harris Fellow, an Honorary Fellow of the Liverpool Hope University School of Business, serving on the advisory boards for the UAB School of Business and the University of Alabama Culver House School of Business and the Stanford University Brock School of Business. He received the 2017 Samuel Ullman Award for Exemplary Service to the Japanese-Alabama relationship. And for his extensive work, he's also received an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from Piedmont University in May of 2019 and a Doctor of Humane Letters from Talladega College in August of 2020. He received his PhD in Politics and International Relations from the University of Hertfordshire. And his family is the center of his life and his hobbies are collecting vintage champagne and limited production automobiles. So you've had quite a long and a varied career, both personally and professionally, it sounds like. I don't so like to be don't <laughs> like to be bored. Apparently not. So thank you so much for joining us today and, and talking about your experience. And we really appreciate your time coming in to Stacey, join us. Stacy, it's always a pleasure to be with you and learn what you're doing. And more importantly, to even support what you're doing, because it's a wonderful thing. Uh, if it's not for folks like you in the educational side of Alabama, I don't think we would create as many world leaders as we do. If you think about it, the next generation of world leaders are sitting in classrooms today or on Zoom calls in classrooms today. So thank you for what you and your folks do to make this world a better place and a smaller place, too. So thanks for letting me be on here today. Um, as we've talked about earlier, and thank you for the, uh, the introduction, I am from Birmingham, a little place up on the mountain called Bluff Park. And the interesting part about me and Japan is that in the, the middle of World War II, my father was drafted into the Navy. And he, after his training, he was on a battleship that bombarded Japan. And whenever the war was over, he came back, he went to a school in Long Island called the Merchant Marine Academy, uh, United States Merchant Marine Academy, which made him an officer. And he was on an aircraft carrier in the Korean War. And he was in charge of shore leave. And so when it came time for shore leave, they went to Tokyo Bay and anchored that aircraft carrier. And he and 15 of his fellow crewmates climbed Mount Fuji. Uh, and I actually have a lot of his memorabilia from those trips. But then in his professional career, he worked his way to be VP of US Steel in, uh, in Alabama. And in early, mid 1970s, Japanese steel hit the US mainland at a price that was virtually 60% below what US Steel could produce steel at. So the US Steel Board wanted to go to the President of the United States and to Congress and embargo Japanese steel. My father went to the chairman of the board and CEO of US Steel and said, don't, you don't want to do that. I have been in Japan. I've been in Japan in wartime. And I found that although our nations were at war, the people treated us with open arms when we went ashore and told about his studies about Japan and his experiences and said, I think we need to try to form a partnership with Nippon Steel and not embargo this. That was actually the first ever uh, partnership between a Japanese steel company and the United States 
U.S. Steel Company. So picture this. Let's fast forward to C. About September of 2013, my father was told that I would become the honorary consul general of Japan. And he was at, he was told about that before I was even asked. And his response was very, very eloquent. He said, this is really amazing. The world has grown up. I fought the Japanese. Now my son will be their diplomat. And that was very profound. Now, what was, what was interesting, he knew all about it. We talked about it a great deal. And my appointment was made uh, on July 22nd, 2014. He passed away five months before that. But to have his support uh, with what he had gone through just in his lifetime between being at war with Japan, standing up for Japan with U.S. Steel, and then having his son, only son, his favorite son, become Jeff, Japan's diplomat to his home state. It was just an amazing story. So that, that is kind of my background with Japan. And since becoming the honorary consul general of Japan, since receiving this appointment, I've learned so much about Japan and Alabama. It goes way back. It goes back into the days of the late 70s when uh, uh, Sony Magnetic Tapes was recruited for a, to build a factory down in Dothan, Alabama, to today where there's 174 Japanese-owned and affiliated firms in the state of Alabama. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is. In Georgia, there's a little over 600. But keep in mind, in Georgia, they have one city that is larger than the population of our entire state, meaning Atlanta. So the economic impact of Japan on the state of Alabama is amazing. And if you turn it into relevance, if you took the payrolls of those 104 Japanese-owned affiliated firms, and you took away the consumer spending out of the economy of Alabama, it would affect Alabama to this level. You could not fund the state education budget. So if you bring it down to that denominator, how important is Japan to Alabama? It's major. But then again, how important is Alabama to Japan? Tremendously important. If you look at just the example of the Southeastern U.S.-Japan conference that happened in Birmingham, Alabama in 2015, you will see that it was one of the largest, largest turnouts of Japanese attendees to a Southeast U.S.-Japan conference ever. 400 Japanese delegates came from Japan uh, to that conference. In that, there was the um, Department of Commerce, led by Greg Canfield, were able to create new relationships that ended up being one of the catalysts to the Mazda Toyota plant that has been built up near Huntsville. So all of, all of this, people think Alabama is just a small state that sits down and has mountains in the north and water in the south, and it's so much more than that on a global scale. In fact, if you look at the economies, the combined economies of the six southeastern United States, excuse me, five southeastern states in the southeast U.S., it creates the sixth largest economy in the world, Alabama and Georgia, right smack in the middle of that. So how important is Japan to Alabama? Very, very important. What drives that? Yes, business drives that. Um, However, education drives that relationship. Uh, I think most importantly, Stacy, what you're doing is right up there at the top to make sure <clears throat> that leaders are prepared to go to Japan. Um, let's see, there's a Japan program called the JOY program, Japan Outreach Initiative. And there's a JOY program at, univers at Troy University that has been extremely successful. So successful that we were able to get a second concurrent uh, JOY program in the state of Alabama. They never really do concurrence at the same, uh, in one state, but at University of West Alabama. Uh, led by Mark Davis in the international side of University of West Alabama, 
there are, I think he's got like 16 different partnerships with universities around the world, six being in Japan. Nihon University, which is the largest university in Japan, 61,000 students spread across 16 campuses, uh, is a partner with UWA, University of West Alabama. And when you look at what Auburn has been able to do, uh, UAB, Alabama main campus, it's, it's amazing. All of these translate into opportunities for students. I'll tell you a quick story, if you don't mind, about the background of the Talladega uh, honor I received back in August. Please do. Japan, Japan wanted to fund some students at a university to come over to Japan for an immersion program. And the hope was that they would gain a better understanding of Japan and then look at Japanese companies uh, to be their employers. I suggested Talladega. Talladega is sort of black university. Uh, Talladega has a storied history, a wonderful history founded by slaves. Uh, and it is a, it's a school that gets overlooked quite often. I put together a program, went to meet with the president and he said, so you want to send 23 of my students to Japan. What's the, what's the cost? There's nothing. Uh, the government of Japan is offering to pay everything except for the cost of securing a passport. In December of last year, 23 students, five um, chaperones, including the president and his wife, went to Tokyo, went to Mabashi, several other places for this total immersion. In some of the training that I did with them, I told the students, you have one assignment for me, and that is you have to send me a postcard from Japan right on the back, what you're experiencing. Every one of them, the central theme was, it's a life-changing experience. They came to my house, all of them, there was about 35 people who came to the house when they got home, and it was a, told me about this life-changing experience. It was very nice then to recognize what Japan did by giving me an honorary doctorate back in, uh, in August, but I got a chance to meet those students again and listen to their life-changing experiences, seven of which have been hired by Honda. So once again, education in Alabama, working together with Japan to benefit students. Uh, we've, there's a program that is very prolific called the JET program. And the JET program takes, starts looking at students around their junior year and takes application from them in their senior year so that once they graduate from college they're able to go to Japan to teach English for up to five-year period. We actually have a friend uh, who is actually three of the ones I have endorsed are there now. One guy from Birmingham who is in Hitachi told me, I asked him, when's the next time you're coming home? He said, I am home. I don't go back to the States anymore. On this jet program, he met a young lady. Uh, they got married. They have a child. His home is in Japan. He got interested in Japan in, in uh, grammar school, and then through high school, then through college. And it's changed his life. It's made his world a better place. So once again, how important is Japan to Alabama? Ask people like Brian. It's amazing. Stacy, there's a lot more that I can talk about, but why don't you and I have a little conversation here back and forth? Sounds good. So uh, you've been doing this for a lot of years, uh, working with um, overseas partners and particularly Japan and how has your work with overseas, whether it's Japan or any entities that you've worked with, grown in the last 20 years? Oh, wow. Well, Morrison Conferencing, which is a global teleconference company that I own and founded back in uh, the mid-90s, 96, actually saw an opportunity. 
um, to have a conference call service that was global and it didn't exist. But I, I, I had to figure out how do, how do I get into that market? What's my shortest chance of getting viability? It was through, I figured out, it was through the diplomatic circles, which meant the consul corps that is in Atlanta. And I think that there's 90% of all the, the uh, foreign governments that are represented in Washington, D.C. have consulates in Atlanta that are responsible for the five southeastern United States. So I met with the British consul general, and he introduced me to some people in Manchester, and Morrison Conferencing's first international efforts were out of an office in Manchester. And that company, Morrison Conferencing, has now grown to where it has operations in 65 countries. So from my personal experience with my company, um, using those diplomatic circles, those uh, networking and growing a business has been very beneficial glo globally. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but perhaps the largest single Japanese investment into U.S. soil happened here in Birmingham in February 2014. It was when Daiichi Life Insurance Corporation purchased Protective Life, $5.7 billion for one purchase. And you may say, well, Mark, how does that compare to an automotive plant that's just being built in Huntsville, Mazda Toyota? That was a $1 billion investment. So a five, one time, $5 billion investment in the Birmingham to buy an insurance company. Uh, they did not come in and gut the American workers, the Birmingham workers. In fact, they hired more. They've used Protective as a international acquisition uh, module. They have been able to acquire more companies through their relationship with Protective. And in fact, the CEO that they, of Protective, was there forever and still lives less than 10 miles from his office. So Japan came in and recognized that local talent built that business and they would keep it. And it has been a, a wise move for them. So I've been able to advise other businesses about how to do business globally, taking into account uh, currency exchanges, mar market fluctuations, kind of the intersection of business and diplomacy, how one feeds off the other. Mm -hmm. And, and um, they've been successful. You, you have to understand that the success of Alabama is based on the ideas of Alabamians. We've had some good leadership. We've had leadership that understands our place on the world stage has done their best to, uh, to make it bigger. Good question. So Manchester was one of your first connections. When I know your history with Japan through your dad, but when did you really first inter, start interacting with the Japanese diplomatic circles? My predecessor as honorary consul general was a very good friend and mentor of mine. He was a former chairman and CEO of Alabama Power, Elmer Harris. Um, Mr. Harris, uh, I met him just out of the blue. I walked up to him at uh, one of the governor's inaugural balls. He and my father knew each other. So that was an icebreaker. He took an interest in my business. And then he said, uh, I see that you've grown into England and Europe. Would you like to meet the Japanese consul general? Yeah. So we went to Atlanta and met with him. And then I had an opportunity with the Japanese company uh, to become a customer, but I needed some credibility. So I took the consul general to lunch and asked him, would you give me an endorsement? Sure. That was our first Japanese customer. Our largest customer today is still a Japanese firm. So as that grew and I made a few trips to Japan, I got involved with the Japan American Society of Alabama and Japan American Society of Georgia, which then also North Carolina across the US. And it got to where I knew a great deal of people in Japan as well as here. And one day Elmer Harris called me up and he said, I'm going to retire. And I decided who my replacement's going to be. So I said, Elmer, you just let me know. I'll call him up and we'll set up a lunch. He said, Oh no, it's you. And I said, you lost your mind. 
I think you got well and told. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I said, I'm not qualified for this at all. He said, oh, but you are. I've trained you well. Well, he did. And um, Elmer Harris passed away in December of this past year. What a mentor he was to me and the doors that he opened. And it enabled me to be successful to this point of uh, in this position. So that, that was how I was introduced because a fella that had a great deal of influence, uh, I found favor with him and he saw what I was trying to do. And I think Japan appreciates it. So how important is the relationship building between you and your partners overseas? And is it something you have to keep working at? You, you, you do, it's, it's, it's really like a marriage. Um, if you think about how you get married, you got to meet first. Uh, you got to get to know each other. You got to make sure you've got some things that are in common. And then you really get to know each other. Then you get married, but you, it doesn't stop there. You have to continue cultivating that relationship that's based on caring. And what do you care about in any relationship is what determines how successful that relationship will be. My father told me something a long time ago that has stuck with me. My father had a, made a career of mentoring me. As I said, I was the only son. I was by default the favorite son. But one of the things he said is that a smart man knows everything, but a wise man knows everybody. And I've made a career of knowing everybody. Uh, there's, not, there's not a country or a city I go to that I don't know somebody in. One, for safety's sake. If you have an issue, you need to find someone you know that can help you. But everyone that trusts you will help you in what you ask and how that you can help accomplish the goals that you set. Uh, you cannot be selfish. Uh, you have to make sure, you know, people talk about win, 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 win uh, relationships. Every relationship that's honest and pure in its beginnings is basically a win, win. There are times that I have helped people in business, I've not seen a penny from it. But sheer gratification to know that this company had no idea how to get out of a wet paper bag, and three years later, they've got sales in 16 countries. It makes me feel good. It's good to help folks. That's kind of the human way of doing it. So the value of building a network, working that network, remaining in contact with people is invaluable. I have friends of mine that have a very close circle and they don't cultivate those relationships. I actually are the ones is the one that calls them. You know, hey, we hadn't talked in six months. How you doing? Oh, fine. And one of them, a few, a few years ago, my wife and I met, he and his wife up in Nashville. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you keep engaged because I'm not that kind of guy. So a smart man knows everything, but a wise man knows everybody. Is there ever conflict in that marriage? It's always conflict in everything. Yeah. Uh, there's conflict in the political side of things, which so being a diplomat. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody asked me one day what the definition of a diplomat is. Two things. Number one, you can talk on any subject for five minutes with a relative degree of believability. Number two is you fix the messes politicians get you into. And there's always conflict. There's conflict about currency exchanges, conflict about um, the, uh, political waves. Japan would tell you, we, we really don't have a dog in the hunt about who's the president of the United States. We can work with anybody. But Japan has their agenda for Donald Trump. They had their agenda for Obama. They will have their agenda for Joe Biden. They had their agenda for Dwight Eisenhower. Now, one part of that agenda with Eisenhower came, became the roots and the beginnings of sister cities. Uh, the first sister cities programs were put in place between the United States and Japan and the United States and Germany. And the premise behind that was peoples that have dinner together don't invade each other. 
and you look at what happened in the 40s and the 30s with Germany and the US and Germany and Japan, you don't see that anymore. So Japan's agenda was to get closer to the US and create uh, more relationships. And that is the first time ever in history that a country that invaded another country, Japan, the US, has they've ever banded together to rebuild that invading country's economy. And look at the economies of the US and Japan right now. It's amazing. So what is the greatest accomplishment that you've seen in Alabama Japanese relations in your time as honorary consul? I know the, the economic connections have definitely grown. That's definitely a success. But what is one of your greatest accomplishments or, the, or for the, either for yourself with that relationship or with the state with that relationship? Um, first off, my term spans two governors, uh, Governor Bentley and Governor Ivey, <clears throat> both of which had very good uh, commerce directors. Uh, Greg Canfield. Those governors understand that Alabama and Japan have scratched the surface on our relationships. And working with them has enabled me to get a lot done, as you say, from a business perspective. Looking at the sister cities programs that Mobile, Montevallo, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham have are wonderful. But I'm going to give you an example of two greatest accomplishments. I want to tell you they happened with me. Number one would be finding out while I served as chairman of Birmingham Sister Cities program and I was on the board of Sister Cities International, finding out that there was 199 sister cities between the country of Japan and the United States. I wanted to be 200. I wanted to get 200 under my watch as honorary consul general and as chairman of Birmingham Sister Cities Commission. It was my Bashi. My Bashi, uh, 90 miles northwest of uh, Tokyo, in the foothills of the mountains, beautiful city. They were so honored, they brought their entire city leadership, with the exception of one deputy mayor and one clerk, <clears throat> to Birmingham to sign that sister city agreement. And it was signed right in front of the tea house. It was built, designed and built by one of their own, a fellow named Tago. The highlight of that for me was the fact that 4th of July, 3rd of July is my father's birthday. That sister city agreement was signed on the 3rd of July, 2017. The next day, 4th of July, big deal in, in America, big deal in my family. It's my youngest son's birthday, but it's also Mayor Yamamoto's birthday. We had a reception at our home, 312 people at our house to celebrate that relationship between Birmingham and Mabashi, the 200 sister city between the two countries, countries that less than 70 years ago, which is uh, people are still alive, were in a fierce war with each other. So my father was right, the world has grown up. But the second was, had to be Talladega. Talladega story is that it was founded by slaves. And the school over the years had waned and they hired a new president, Billy Hawkins. Billy Hawkins came in basically to make arrangements to shut down Talladega University, Talladega College. And he asked his staff, what a value do you have? And this one lady said, well, I don't know if you ever seen those paintings up on top of this, near the ceiling in the library. No, let me go look. It was behind a door that went into a building that could be jimmied with a screwdriver was the Amistad murals. Dr. Hawkins looked at them, started doing some research on them, pulled them down, got them refurbished. They were valued at over $50 million. 
he put them on a parade to go around the United States. They stayed at the High Museum, generated another $20 million of revenue for that college. Dr. Hawkins single-handedly started growing that college. However, the Talladega College um, is a victim of a lot of things that happen within the United States, and that is a historic black university gets overlooked. I knew of Talladega, and for 23 students, some of which were first-generation college students on Pell Grants, to be able to go to Japan with that much out of pocket. Only thing they really had to spend was a few yen to buy a postcard to send to me. But to see then that seven of them, and this is the ones I know of right now, that are working for Honda. It's an, it was an amazing accomplishment. And why did they do that? Why did Japan do that? They cared enough for the future leaders within the state of Alabama to ask me to decide which college it should be. Should it be Auburn? Should it be Alabama? Should it be Troy, where my son goes to school? Should it be UAH, where my other son goes to school? No, it had to be Talladega College. Yeah, those are two of the things, as you see, that make me smile because um, directly affected the lives of those students to the better and their generations of their family forever. Certainly it's good to say, wow, Daiichi purchased Protective Life on my watch. Certainly it's great to talk about the expansion of a Japanese company in Southwest Alabama whenever a steel plant owned by the Germans didn't go. And Japan had to come in and rescue it. Certainly it's a great thing to talk about the Mazda Toyota partnership and how that plot that was cleared for a German manuf automobile manufacturer named Volkswagen, how that was acquired by a Japanese firm and what they're doing in North Alabama. Those are great things. Those are business things. Those create revenue for a lot of people. But wow, to affect the citizens of the city of Maibashi and, and, and Birmingham with the 200 sister city and then to affect the lives for generations of Talladega College students, two of the high points. Thanks for asking me about that. That's my pleasure. Well, we have one student on with us. Brooklyn, are you able to unmute? I was trying to see if you might have a question. Um, there was Brooklyn. I can. <laughs> there you go. Man. <laughs> okay. I can. That was really informative and interesting. Thank you for taking your time to yes, um, yes, have that conversation. Um, I was one. Okay, I'm a freshman at Jeff State. I'm still a freshman. I was one, and you were talking about the the DT programs, and I was wondering if you have any advice or a kind of uh, suggestions for what a freshman like who's interested in definitely going overseas and experiencing some of the things you talked about. If there were any um, suggestions that you might have for what I can do like, at this stage? Uh, many, but I'll keep it brief. Number one, <laughs> engage with the consulate in Atlanta. Consul General Takeuchi's group over there administer that program uh, okay. in the Southeast. Engage with them. Learn everything you can about right. what it means to be a JET, uh, what it means to go into the program and come out of the program. And then uh, Joe Lee Tevino at Japan American Society of Alabama. Right. You can find her online, engage with her. There's a JET okay. alumni group here in Alabama. One of the best people to engage with, it's a guy named Richard Newton. You can find him on Facebook, you can find him online. He was really my mentor uh, when I became uh, honorary consul general. Uh, Richard is a good friend, but he started his love for Japan through the JET program. Um, and then, if you would, contact me. I'll give you an email address real quick. It's okay. simple. You don't even have to write it down. Japan.alabama at gmail.com. Okay. I'll give, you the, <laughs> I'll give you the names and contact information of two Alabama students, graduates, who are in JET program now. One in Takasaki, 
uh, one in Mabashi. Engage with them. Okay. And if this is something you really, really want to do. You'll you'll hear the words of the of the students of Talladega. It'll be a life changing yes, experience. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And Brooklyn, I can get you in contact with the Jet Alumni Association of Alabama as well. So we could we can definitely thank you, thank help you. connect if that's a way. Stacey, there are hey. actually some uh, Jeff State faculty that are looking to develop a two week faculty led program for a history class for Japan. It was supposed to go in potentially 2021, but you know. 21 is, who knows, so that might be projected for 2022. So there might be a way while you're still here to do something through Jeff State. So check back with me on that as well. The advice I would really give you. I definitely will, is, thank you so much. Is to live it, be a part of it. Because it's just not like a class you would take that, oh, I have to take calculus, I'll never use it. No, if this is what you wanna do, get in the middle of it and remember a smart person knows everything but a wise person knows everybody well mark thank you so much for taking your time today this has been great it's always wonderful to have a good conversation with you always so informative is there anything else that you would like to pass to students who might watch the recording of this um it would be interesting for um to see this program at Jeff State that you're that you're working on to grow. And if there's anything that I can do to facilitate you and your efforts and any of the students that watch this, japan.alabama at gmail.com, I'll be happy to respond and step up and do whatever I can. Uh, I hate to say it, it's my job. It is my job, but it's also my pleasure to do so. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So thank you so, so much. This has been fun, Mark. It was great to have a conversation with you. You too. Y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. Arigato and Saranara. <laughs>